Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Did you realize that there are a lot of different types of servers out there in the world? I mean, you, you may realize this if you're a network administrator. And certainly, if you are a network administrator, sometimes troubleshooting the problems on the web servers takes a certain set of tools. And that's where we always turn to our friends Josh Stevens at SolarWinds.net. And I believe uh, you, uh, you've got a special page just for the people who follow me, correct, Josh? That's right, solarwinds.com slash locker gnome. There we go. You heard it, solarwinds.com slash locker gnome. And I believe there's different specials uh, running throughout the year there, as well as our past interviews and discussions that we've had. Yeah, that's exactly right. Past interviews and tech talks on similar subjects and specials. And specifically right now, since we're talking about uh, monitoring servers and server-based applications, there's actually a special out there on IP Monitor, which is kind of a cool application for for monitoring server-based apps and really just for getting started with basic network monitoring if you haven't already done so. Uh, it's really a cool application. You can download a free 21-day trial from the website. And there's also some special pricing out there right now on that Locker Gnome page. So you might check that out as well. Awesome. Well, today we wanted to focus specifically on troubleshooting issues that may uh, occur specifically with server-side applications. Uh, are there general uh, categories of these types of apps? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, when people think about, you know, sort of basic server applications, you know, the things that people typically tend to rely on and notice when they're down are, are web applications, you know, web servers, um, email, exchange servers specifically, but any email server, and basic file and print services. And, you know, in most organizations, you know, if the web server's down or the email's not working or you can't, you know, share files or print, that's kind of a core part of the business, right? And it makes it pretty hard to get your job done. And so really what IP Monitor is, is it's sort of a, a, a best practice tool for how you would go about ensuring that those applications are up and running at all times and receive notification if they were to fail. And uh, the application, I never, this is probably a, a, a question that you can't answer, but the application that causes the most amount of problems on networks would be? Well, you know, I, I think that in terms of applications that are the least reliable, probably web applications like, you know, web servers, because, you know, web servers are highly customizable and, you know, many novice users will go ahead and build their own websites and write their own web code. But in terms of services that you may get the most heat for from your boss in terms of it's down, you know, email is probably the hottest subject, right? Because, you know, if email's down, then everybody gets really ticked off really, really fast. <laughs> Um, especially they can't even email you to tell you how ticked off they are. <laughs> so not only right, not only do you have people that are aggravated, but they're actually calling you or standing at your door saying, "Hey, you know, I can't send email." Uh, you know, even little things like printing uh, to a network printer when someone can't print, uh, you know, that can be a, a really high priority issue for you. If you have some executives in town trying to walk into a meeting, they can't print off their slides. You know, those things can cause you a, a huge headache. And really, most of those headaches are avoidable with just some simple network monitoring, a lot of what you deal with IP Monitor. So with IP Monitor, then, this tool, it, it give us a walkthrough. I mean, what, what is the experience just, you know, launching the app for the first time? What, what are we going to see? That's a great question. So if you download IP Monitor you know, right now from solarwinds.com slash locker gnome, uh, it'll run for 21 days for free. You download it, run setup.exe, and as soon as you launch it, it's basically going to run you through a quick wizard where it will go out and automatically find your web servers and email servers and your routers and switches and things like that. Wow. And then it will detect what statistics are available to monitor those. It will talk to all those servers and find that, oh, well, server number one has a web server on it, so I can monitor that. And server number two is an email server, so I can monitor that. And it will automatically and, and dynamically build all these monitors and throw them into the application so that the next thing you see is literally uh, sort of a picture of your network with the status of all your servers and all your server-based apps and your network equipment. And, you know, it's real, real easy to use. I mean, literally less than 15 minutes to be up and running. And, you know, it can save you a lot of trouble in terms of, you know, not knowing when your applications are having issues. I think I'd certainly appreciate the fact that it auto-discovers uh, uh, the services on the network. That's, I've used programs like that before, not of course, in, a, in a, an environment where I'd have to support hundreds, if not thousands, if not more, uh, computers and, and devices. Uh, how does that work? Is there a certain protocol that you're using for the discovery and then the configuration? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. There actually are many different protocols that are used for discovery and configuration. Um, 
you know, the good thing is as a user, you don't necessarily have to know what protocol is. It does it all behind the scenes. Right. But, you know, it uses things like SNMP, uh, Simple Network Management Protocol, and ICMP, which, or, or ping. Um, Cisco, Cisco Discovery Protocol is used. Um, we also read the ARP and bridge tables uh, from all the different routers and switches and go out and discover, you know, the, the physical devices. And then in terms of discovering applications, there are many, many ways to do that, either through WMI on Windows servers, uh, through SNMP. You might also run application-specific tests or sort of like a port scan to see if a server is listening on port 80, then you pretty much know that it's a web server. And so, you know, there are many ways to go out and discover uh, those applications and those servers, and then we just dynamically build uh, sort of what we call a monitor, which actually monitors the server and tells you when there's a problem. Well, I know that, I mean, you mentioned web servers. I mean, there are some cases where my printer, I've got like a, it's a networkable printer. It's got a, mm -hmm. a you know, a network port. Um, it has a web server built in. So how then would IP monitor handle a printer as a network device that had a web server built into it? Would it, would it be either one and the same or? No, I would detect that it's a printer. And so we would dynamically add print style monitors to that server. Device. Now, if you wanted to monitor the web server on, you know, the, the, the print server, you could, of course. Um, that might be one easy way to tell if the print server's down, if the website for it goes down, if it's locked up. Um, typically, people, when they monitor printers and like, like jet direct cards or things, they want to monitor, you know, toner and paper and, and status and things of that nature. Um, it's especially important when it's a server-based printer, where you actually have a print right. on the server that's installing the print jobs and trying to spin them out because a lot of times that's where you run into problems. I just got a, a review unit uh, for an HP printer that would, well, it's a printer scanner uh, all in mm -hmm. copy or all in one, and you can scan over the network. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Is, is that common in corporate environments of being able to use like a web based interface to scan? It is. It's, it's very common to be able to walk up to a printer, um, scan in a document, and then for it to show up on your network share on the network. Uh, that's the way most people do it today, and uh, you know it, it's real easy to do. And you know, you know, ten years ago, a scanner was a pretty technical, you know, piece of equipment. But nowadays, you know, just about anyone can go scan in documents or photos or whatever it is they want and have them shared on the network. With IP Monitor, then you you, you kind of uh, spoke to this a, a, a couple of minutes ago. Each particular type of well, let's just say device or any mm -hmm. any type of. Uh, thing that's on the network is huh. going to get a different type of view in IP monitor, different uh, tools to let it know, you know, what type of device it is and then how it to, is to be monitored or measured. That's exactly right. So based upon the device type, it will look different within IP monitor. You know, a printer will have a, a printer icon, a server will have a server icon. Um, and also the, the characteristics that we will track for those devices will be different based upon their function in the network. And so, uh, you know, it's really dynamic and it's, it's really smart. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just so easy to take a tool like that, you let it do its thing, and 15 minutes later you have a, a nice picture of your network with status of all your devices. Um, and it's, it's so, so much better than, you know, waiting for a user to call to tell you that you have a problem. Then in terms of monitoring, is it just in the application itself or are there services ancillary to that? So like email alerts, text alerts? Oh yeah, it does all that. So text alerts, you know, email alerts. It can you know call out a modem if the network's actually completely down. Uh, you know, it can run you know batch files and scripts and you know, all the different types of alerts you want to do. So in addition to actually like you're right, you're right. You know, turning something red on the screen, it'll also email you or notify you in some other way if there's a problem. What about network cameras? So yeah, you can monitor a camera with that. You could also integrate uh, you know a camera view with the, the web console. So that, you know, if someone, uh, you know, had an issue, you might want to add, maybe you have a, a webcam that's looking at your server rack and you want to take a look at it from home and see, you know, well, what's going on. Uh, you, you can certainly do that as well. The, uh, uh, I, it, you, you, you made me think of uh, something else by, by uh, you know, going that direction with network cameras and different types of devices on the network. Uh, when something happens... IP monitor is obviously going to tell you that something's wrong. Does it also step you through troubleshooting the problem at hand, potentially? Or is that... Well, I mean, it would give you some hints as to what's happening because you'll know, uh, you know, for instance, if, uh, if you know, a remote side on your network goes down, um, you're going to see that, you know, the, the circuit went down and all the devices behind the router are no longer reachable. And based upon what you see on the screen, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what's happening. Now, it definitely, you know, doesn't go so far as to, 
you know, tell you that, hey, your web server's down and let's go, you know, walk you through logging into it and, and checking the IAS logs to see, you know, what the problem might be. That would be a more advanced application, more like what we have within Orion. But, uh, you know, definitely it will point you in the right direction and show you where you need to look first for sure. And this is, a, you know, very true to all of SolarWinds tools, as we've discussed before. Uh, very much, well, easy to use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really geared. I, I, I don't know if you've really meant to do this, but designed for both the expert and the novice. So not just for someone who knows what they're doing and needs a better tool set, but also for someone who wants to learn how to do this, either as a resume builder, just, you know, a, a, a huge career path or career change. Oh, that's absolutely right. I mean, you know, it never ceases to amaze me. Um, when I have my Google alerts set up for SolarWinds application names and our products, um, how many job applications there are out there for people looking specifically for people that know about SolarWinds applications and products. And so, you know, if you're in the industry and you're, you're looking uh, out there, it's pretty cool that you can download a free copy of all of our software and run them at home in your lab and try them out and learn about them on your own. Um, the applications are built in such a way that, you know, while you will learn about our tools, You'll also learn a lot about just networking in general because you'll learn to understand the terms and the items that are important to a network administrator from looking at what we focused on when developing the applications. Well, I can tell you one thing. I, there's uh, so many times that I need the right tool. I'll run into a problem, even on a small home network. I had an issue yesterday uh, dealing with DHCP hiccups and uh, just could not figure out what was going on and, and ultimately just kind of had to give up on the problem because I just did not have the right tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the right tools are, are a big key to understanding the problem. Um, you know, first of all, obviously, you know, monitoring so you know when you have a problem. But once that problem is identified, you know, um, you need tools that will enhance your skill set so that they help you find problems that you don't know about. I mean, if you knew exactly where all the problems were by just glancing at it, you know, tools would be sort of unnecessary. Um, but, you know, in most cases, we don't. We don't necessarily know what the root cause is. So having tools like, you know, our engineer's tool set that give you uh, a powerful set of applications that really enhance your skills and allow you to troubleshoot uh, much more deeply and diagnose more quickly than you would have before, you know, it's, it's a big hand. Then you've got, uh, you, obviously this is going to be running, well, obvious to me because I know your tool set, it'll, the tools run on Windows, but mm -hmm. are you able to monitor any type of service, internet service, no matter what the uh, platform? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, if we can monitor any type of server or application regardless of the platform, whether it's you know, Solaris or HPUX or, or, or Linux or, or Windows environment, we can monitor all, or Mac OS even, we can monitor all that. Um, you know, our browsers support, you know, Firefox and IE and Safari for the most part. So, you know, it's pretty universal in the ways that you can leverage the applications. Um, and, and also on the network side, you know, whether you have, you know, Cisco routers or Juniper or, you know, 3Com or Stream or whatever, we support all that stuff out of the box because, you know, our perspective has always been to be sort of vendor neutral from a hardware perspective and a server OS perspective and just, you know, provide software that, that anyone can use and can be easily affordable uh, and very easy to integrate uh, and, and to deploy, you know, regardless of your skill set. All right. So here's potentially a semi-obvious question. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. IPv6. Mm -hmm. So actually, we've, we've been working on IPv6 for a while now. And some of our applications are IPv6 compatible now, and the rest are being worked on today. And so we'll actually be releasing some new information on that on the website, solarwinds.com, here pretty quick. But, uh, you know, definitely something we're focused on, working with our customers to understand what their needs really are, and, you know, also helping them to understand the technology, because it's a big leap as a network administrator to go from IPv4 to IPv6. Just understanding the technology, it's, it's so much more complex. Uh, it's, it's so much uh, less human-friendly. To work with those types of addresses, that you know, it's a big stretch for people. So we're trying to help with that as well. Yeah, the uh, I mean, it, that there was no right way to, or wrong way to answer that question because huh. really there aren't a lot of IPv6 apps out there. I mean, it's still kind of it's there, and we know we're going there eventually. But I don't know what that tipping point is going to be. I, maybe you have further insight in terms of uh, these two types of IP. Well, it, it's, it sort of depends upon, uh, you know, the audience. What most customers look for today is they look for a product to have a definitive roadmap that says, yes, we are absolutely going to do IPv6. We're going to commit to it. And here's when we plan to do it. Um, in terms of adoption, we see the adoption uh, starting to take place pretty rapidly in the government sector. And usually what happens is once the government sector starts to absorb that technology, especially the military, then these users start, you know, getting out of the military, you know, as their terms of service are up and start going out in the industry and it starts to sort of spread out throughout the industry 
uh, sort of on its own. Now, I'm definitely seeing that now. I'm seeing it on a lot of the mail lists and forums I'm on that IPv6 is really starting to, to do its first real foothold in the industry that I've ever seen it have. Now, you know, the technology uh, is, is actually still pretty immature. So, you know, from a network monitoring standpoint, you know, one of the things that that slows companies like SolarWinds down is that the adoption of IPv6 and the way that the hardware vendors support it uh, tends to take a little bit longer. And so in order to offer customers the same features they see in our products in IPv4, we have to work pretty hard on the hardware vendors to get them to support the monitoring characteristics for IPv6 that would be compatible. And so it's, it's actually a lot more complicated than it probably sounds, but um, you know we're, we're right in the middle of it and, and in the fix, so it's, uh, it's a fun project and I'm, I'm glad to be working on it. Well, yeah, I thought I'd uh, you know throw that in there because I know it's a question on a lot of people's minds, and it's good to know that it's on your roadmap and that you're uh, you're embracing it already. So. Absolutely. All right, so SolarWinds.com slash LockerGnome is where you can find past interviews as well as uh, specials on SolarWinds software, uh, including IP Monitor. Um, That's right. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Josh, for joining us. Uh, you know, thank again. you, bud. It was fun. It's always fun chatting with you, and uh, I enjoyed it. I always learn something new. Believe it or not, I really <laughs> truly do. I no one believes me. Next, I, I think I'm going to work on my beard, though, next time. All right, keep working on it. I, I, I'm doing, I, I, get, I get like two days into it, and then I'm like, eh, no, i got to shave. Anyway, my email address is chris at perlo.com. Maybe you have questions related to networks, large or small. Feel free to pass it along. And, of course, as we mentioned, solarwinds.com slash locker room is where you can get some specials. Whether you are a novice admin, you got roped into uh, administering a network, and I know a lot of people out there are in that boat uh, because I almost was, but then I went a completely di uh, different direction with my career. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I'm normally streaming live uh, this video with the chat room, although the chat room was kind of silent. Anytime we talk about network topics, everyone's silent because they're like, yeah, I, I got to try that. And then, then, then they go and then they, they're, they're downloading the trial like right now so they don't ask questions, which is a good thing. And then, of course, we've also got a, a group of geeks in a community with uh, subgroups of network admins at geeks.perillo.com. But the chat room and the video is always open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later. See you later.